Howdy doody buckaroonies. When I was a kid, before me and my friends would go roaming around the neighborhood on our Razor scooters and terrorizing people being general pieces of shit, we would get all hyped up on Mountain Dew and stupidity and jam out to some Godsmack or some Ludacris because it made us feel ready to take on the world. One of the most important albums to me is Buckethead's Coma. The first time I heard this album, it took that idea of feeling the music to a completely different level and it just instantly clicked in my brain that that's what I want to do. I think it stands to reason that we all want to write music that we feel and music that we feel matters and music that resonates with people. Unless, of course, you're trying to write some top 40 country stuff to butt chug some Bud Light to, but I mean, if that's your thing, who am I to judge? And you do you, boo boo. In today's video, I wanted to share with you three techniques I use all the time to take a rough idea and turn it into a completed product that is a finished, emotional, evocative piece of music. And I promise you, these same three techniques work with any style of music. Today's video is also sponsored by Orchestral Tools, so a big thank you to them for sending along some of the stuff we're going to be playing with here today and of course helping to support the channel, but we'll talk more about them in a bit. As Iggy Azalea once said, first things first, here's what we're going to be working with today. I've cut together about one minute of stock footage of some nice mountains and icy landscapes and things like that, and we're going to be writing a cue to go with this scene because for the sake of time of developing a full idea from start to finish, we're going to keep things nice and brief. Let's say we've already got a chord progression in mind. We're going to do something like this. And that's what we're going to work from for this session. Let's give this a play and try that underneath and see what we're cooking with. And I think you get the idea. That sounds like a big stinky poo poo pile of garbo. So let's start developing this into something we want to use. must truly be difficult to live your life with such insignificant genitals. Emotional music idea number one, it's what you don't play that matters the most because the feelings live between the notes. To demonstrate this in action, let's roll back to the beginning here and I'm gonna play two versions of this idea. One that's crammed to the gills with stuff and one that's a bit more slow and plodding and let's see which kind of draws you into the scene more. could do something maybe more like this. I haven't even left the one chord yet. Because when we do, it feels a lot more powerful. So that is one of the easiest ways to take an idea from some kind of plodding pokey thing and turn it into something that really starts to feel big. So now I think we're onto something. Let's move to idea number two, which is starting to venture outside the lines a little bit with things like parallel keys or switching modes or things like that along the way. Currently we are writing out of the key of G sharp minor, and we could switch into maybe something a little bit different by borrowing a note or two. So we could venture a little bit outside here and from this B, we could pull up to a B major, but then we could rotate things down a little bit here and jump to a B flat and get something that might work a bit more in context here.
and all sorts of other interesting things. Now, one of the things that makes this easier if you don't know much about music theory is to look at what you're playing and borrow a chord from one of those notes and try swapping some things out with it. So if we look through this progression, from here, I do want to go back up to this F sharp. So instead of doing that, let's look at the F sharp. And maybe we could use the five here, which is the C sharp and use a C sharp instead. So let's try that. Cool, so I've got a five there because I'm using C sharp and G sharp here to make that five. So now we could make this major or minor. Let's try going to minor. That's cool, but what if it was major? That's kind of a cool turnaround, and it's really that easy to do some advanced pro level stuff without needing to know the theory behind it necessarily because we're just making slight alterations to things and using some context clues from what we've already got. Once you start to understand this concept of substituting things with other things, even if you don't understand why or what you're doing necessarily, it opens up the floodgates to do a lot of really cool stuff. So maybe the next time we come around here from this big major kind of the clouds have cleared feeling, we could move back up to the one, but instead of being minor, maybe now it's major. So we could do all sorts of fun stuff by just substituting major and minor here or there, and then from that building into something new, because now if we've got this C sharp major here, now we could build out maybe something with a little bit of mixolydian flair, because we could resolve up to the F sharp and back home. And with that major feel, we could get a lot of stuff from it. So let's just fool around with this and see what stands out. And I know we've got the five here, which is the E flat. So what if that was major? because normally it would be a minor in the key we're in, but we could make it major and do this major five to minor one. That's pretty spooky, and there's all sorts of other flavors and feelings here. And that's a pretty cool idea, just swapping some majors for some minors now and again, picking a note that's in an existing chord and building a new chord from that, and we've done all sorts of fancy stuff without needing to have any real clue what we're doing other than just feeling it out, man, because scales and keys and all that can be just a suggestion, because the rest is just jazz. Now that we've started developing this idea, we have some motions and movements in mind, it comes down to probably the most core element of turning an idea into an emotional piece of music, and that is playing with time and texture. First off, we've been playing with just the standard felt piano here, but maybe we could explore a different version of this piano here, like the felt low. Let's swap that out and see what this one sounds like way more soft and cinematic, so I think we're gonna roll with that. To spice this up a little bit, I've done one of my favorite tricks here, which is adding a reverb that's side-chained from the original signal. So if I play a big chord here, you'll see in the compressor, it gets ducked out of the way, the reverb signal. And as I let it go, now the reverb comes in. So let's use this super soft piano, because it's got that nice feelings texture and we've got this kind of spicy drone from this long reverb throw underneath and use that to build out the basis of our super emotional track. 
All right, cue up the video and let's out with our rocks out. Now to start developing this idea, we're going to lean full beans into point number three, which is adding texture and timbre to things. So for this, we're going to be using the new orchestral tools library called Habitat, which was made in collaboration with this guy whose name is pronounced as... I'm Dominic Eubeck. I'm a... And I'm not even going to attempt that one. This library features 10 different themes, I guess I would call them. We have mountains, forest, pond, lake, and so on, and each of these has all four seasons in both day and night represented as musical soundscapes that combine synths and orchestral tools with nature recordings, and it's actually really neat. So for this, I picked Mountains Winter Night, which sounds like this. And I think that's really cool. It gives us that kind of icy, windy, crisp, cold feeling, but it also has that just kind of imposing mountain thing. And it's a really neat sound. And we can use the mod wheel to morph. between some different variations on that texture. So that's really gonna be useful to move and shape this over time. Let's get the scene up here once again and start rolling through this now adding this mountain night texture. To start layering this together, I grabbed another sound here from Habitat, which is forest winter night because the mountains had some trees on them, I guess. And it sounds like this. So another cool morphing texture, it has like a stringy synth thing and like some airy rustling branches or something like that. I'm not totally sure, but it sounds cool. Within the sign player, I grabbed the envelope and softened it up here just to make it more of a texture that sort of creeps in and fades out because we're going to be a bit more minimal with this. And as well in the options, I remapped a couple of the controls for the variations and the instrument volume to my MIDI controller here. So I can use this to play with the volume and have my mod wheel to morph between the textures. So that should be pretty useful. Roly polioli, show me the formioli. Another nice thing to add just to evoke a bit more emotion, just so things have kind of a stable center, is some kind of droning element. So here I grabbed my Apparition Engine instrument and just found this sound, which is sort of a... I don't know, airy textured drone thing. And I picture that kind of like the wind sweeping over the mountains maybe. So we're gonna use that just to fill out one kind of long droning thing underneath all this, just to hold it together. So far so good, let's add a few more things and see what we got. This Patina Piano Library also comes with some sort of texture thing, so here I've got this... kind of granular affected piano, so I think we'll use that to add sort of an accent layer to what the piano is doing. Next up here to add some dramatic swoopy movement, I've grabbed Tallinn, which is the Baltic Voices and Strings Library. Here I paired up some violas and some cellos with some different articulations and got this really nice layered... string thing going on, including some nice deep and dynamic cello stuff. There's quite a few articulations, including one of my favorites that I've never heard of, which is Portato. Everything else is done, so I think finally to cap things off, we're gonna lay down some organic orchestra here because I have a texture in here that's ice, and I thought that would be... sort of an appropriate last layer to everything. All right, done, done, and done. I've mixed things together. I redid the piano and a couple other parts just because I had sort of a different idea of the direction of them. But other than that, all the sounds remain the same. So using the power of doing a bit less and letting the sounds in between speak for themselves, borrowing some notes here and there and doing some music theory goofery and using the power of timbre and texture to drive emotion, we've taken this initial idea. and turned it into this. Let's check out the final result.
So for about 40 minutes worth of work, I don't think that's too shabby of a result. And I think it's a really powerful thing that these three techniques can take such a plunky, awkward idea and turn it into a pretty decent piece of music that really makes you feel something. It's interesting that those same chords became this piece of music that feels like you can feel the fog rolling in over your shoulders as the pines rustle behind you and you look out over this vista to the crackling ice cascading below. That's really just kind of neat and something that's always fascinated me with sound. I think these three techniques are really powerful. I use them day in and day out when I'm doing client work, and I think they're really easy ways to transform an idea from something kind of boring and plain into something that feels pretty cool. So try them out for yourself, because you might be surprised how simple it can be to take your ideas and turn them into something really epic. A big thank you to Orchestral Tools for sending along these libraries and sponsoring today's video. Habitat is out now, and if you want to check it out for yourself, you can find that with the link down in the description, as well as all their other libraries. It's some really cool stuff, and of the ones they sent me, I've really enjoyed them. I think they're really solid, and they all run inside of the free sign player. That wraps everything up for this video, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, and as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.